God bless you guys. It's Coach Timothy here. I pray that you've all had a wonderful day. I'm here with another prophetic word of encouragement from the Lord. And so I pray that this word blesses you. As with all prophetic words, it's really important that you take the word of the Lord uh, that you are hearing, not just from this channel, but from every prophetic voice that you're listening to, that you take it to the Lord in prayer to confirm that it is absolutely a word from the Lord. You want to test the spirits to make sure that you are hearing from God's mouth, right? Um, and from God's mouth, peace. Um, test the spirits to see whether it's from God, whether it's from the flesh or whether it's from the enemy. Amen. Um, as with all of uh, the uh, prophetic words that I release on this channel, I do like to begin with a prayer. And so, uh, Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that you would have your way, Lord God, in this word. I decrease now that you may increase me, increase in me, Lord God, and you would have your way. I pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that as you are using me, Lord God, uh, for your glory, Lord God, that you'll speak through me. Put your hand upon my mouth, put your fingers upon my tongue and guide the words, Lord God, that you want me to say to your people right now in the mighty name of Jesus, to encourage them, to comfort them, to exhort them in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray you, Lord God, that, that you, Lord God, will just have your way through this word, Lord God, that it will have some sort of confirmation for someone that may be listening to this word, that it will be able to uh, help them, Lord God, to seek you out for more instruction, Lord God. Help your people, Lord, to seek your face more than they seek to hear um, others speak on your behalf. I pray, Lord God, that you will cause them to want to listen to your voice directly, that they will spend more time with you in prayer, that they will spend more time reading the word, that they will get that relationship with you, Lord God, so that they can hear your voice accurately in the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. For you said that your, your sheep know your voice and a stranger they will not follow. So that is my prayer today, Lord God. That for people who may have uh, itching ears, Lord God, who are seeking prophetic words here and there, here and there, here and there, here and there, Lord God, that they will begin to seek you, Lord God, through your word, through a prayer life, Lord God, that is that is honorable to you, Lord God, that you will begin speaking and ministering to, to them directly, Lord God, and that when they hear these prophetic words, that they will be sure confirmation, Lord God, that they will be the words that they need to hear from you, Father, to confirm that they heard you correctly in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just thank you right now, Lord God, and declare and decree that no weapon formed against me or this word shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me or this word in judgment, I do now condemn it in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. <clears throat> so, um, first of all, it's the first day of summer. Woohoo! Right? Today is uh, June 20th, 2024. So, uh, it's the first day of summer. And um, if you guys know, last month, the Lord gave me a word that was saying that this was going to be the best summer um, um, of our lives, period. Like, you know, June, July, August would be these months of um, God just showing out in our lives. And these next six months, as we go into July, July into the end of the year, is going to be the months of expansion. My door is open, guys. So you guys are going to hear those airplanes. I apologize in advance. Um, so this word that I have for you today um, it comes from uh, two different scriptures, actually. Um, when the Lord revealed it to me, I understood exactly what he's been saying. <clears throat> so I'm going to read what the Lord gave me, and then I'm going to start breaking it down like I normally do. All right. So this is your John 11, 11 moment. From death to life, says the Lord, I will give you an abundant life to be joined to as an heir to the throne for your faithfulness. My strength has freed you from your bondage. So now you will see my covenant with you in action, for I have marked your life with my abundance. I have placed my hedge around you and I will give you surety for this is your season's beginning to be useful on your mountain. So it's really hot here today. So the ice cream man is out. <laughs> All right. So the Lord is saying here, guys, um, John 11, 11, I'm going to go there really quick. We're going to concentrate on this chapter, the entire chapter of John 11, actually today. But verse 11 says this, it says, these things said he, and after that, he saith unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Okay. Guys, today, like the Lord says here, he says, this is the beginning. This is your season's beginning to be useful on your mountain. 
the, you are about to be awakened. And when I say awakened, I mean like the Lord is about to give you newness of life. You are about to be re resurrected. Um, your, your life is about to change. Okay. Um, and, and I, I mean, <laughs> and this is a word, like I said, take it to the Lord in prayer, but you, not every word that you're hearing is going to be specifically for you. So it's really important that you take it to the Lord in prayer. But I can say that this is for people who have been prepared, who have been waiting on the season to be able to move into their purpose, who have been waiting on the season to begin uh, to begin their purpose. Um, that season begins today. And so um, you are getting ready to be useful. So get ready to get busy. You're going to be busy. All right. Um, there are going to be things that are going to be happening from this point forward that God is getting ready to cause you to be busy. You're going to be busy um, as you as you, yeah, begin your reign. It's just like um, like when Queen Elizabeth died, right? Um, and then Charles, he was immediately, you know, officially called the king, you know, um, because his mother had died. Um, it wasn't until his official coronation, you know, he was already assuming the duties and everything, right? Um, but he had his official coronation where he was officially, you know, uh, recognized as being the king of England, right? Um, so for many of you, you guys are get, you're getting ready to be useful. It's like you you are stepping into your purpose. You are stepping into your calling. You are stepping into that. You are getting ready to be used. So it, it, there's no, there's no, how do I say? There's no gap in between because God, just like God removes kings and he sets up kings, God has been removing a lot of kings lately. If you are paying attention to the to the to the body of Christ, a lot of pastors, a lot of um, people, prophets, uh, uh, people are being exposed in this hour, and and that means um, things are getting ready. And a lot of people, a lot of pastors are stepping down from ministry. That's because you, the time for the remnant has come, where the remnant is getting ready to take their place. The remnant is getting ready to step into their purpose, and so um, there's. I, I keep saying a changing of the guard that's happening that's going to be taking place this summer okay um the lord is saying here he says your death um to life it's your death to life moment your resurrection moment you've been in dead a dead season you've been in a dead place you've been in a uh, uh the wilderness was death for you you had to die to self um the death part of your life is complete like you've died to self you've done everything that you were supposed to do you have died to self OK, and so because of this, <clears throat> because of this, you are um, now ready to be used by the Lord. You died. You 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 crucified your flesh just like he crucified himself on the cross so that he could be raised up with all power in his hand. Right. Um, you are in that same place now, like. Everything that Jesus Christ did for us was an example. So he had to die to the flesh so that he could come into the kingdom of God, so that he could come into alignment with what his purpose was, right? So, which was, he was born to die to save us all from sin, to, to have all authority on heaven and earth, you know, uh, in heaven and on earth. So, um, you guys are taking your authority. You're, you're, you're walking, you're stepping into your purpose. You're stepping into your calling. I've been talking about this for the past month and a half. Um, you get, I said before you were getting ready to. Now the time has come. Starting today, this season of summer, this season of summer is when you are going to get really busy. Um, you're stepping into your calling, all right? So, and, and the Lord is saying that he's getting ready to give you abundant life. Now, remember in John 10, it says, um, I, uh, John 10, 10, let me go back here exactly. John 10, 10 says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Okay. Um, that's what you're getting ready to have. You're getting ready to have this abundant life that God has ordained for you to have. He's joining you to it. Why? Because you are you have been you have been verified by the Lord. You've been trusted um, by the Lord as being faithful, um, and because of your faithfulness, you are you are counted now as a as a not only as a joint heir with Christ, but the Lord has given you a, a seat, a permanent seat. You know, you are an heir. You are now a part of royalty, and so I've spoken about that before as well. But the Lord is saying that his strength is the reason why you got free. He says, my strength has freed you from your bondage, 
right? It is the strength. You have found the joy of the Lord because why? The scripture says that the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? So you have found the joy of the Lord. You have found what it means to, 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 uh, to walk with the Lord and be like, it, your, your soul just feels good. Like, it's like you live this old life that was full of sin. Once you came out of sin and you start walking with the Lord and you saw how good it was, it was like, oh, taste and see how good and how pleasant it is. Uh, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Sorry. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Right. Um, that's what you guys have done. You have tasted and you've seen that the Lord is good and it has brought joy to your soul. So you've gained strength. And the Lord is saying it's because of his strength, that very strength of the Lord that has freed you from the bondage of sin. All right. Um, so it says, so now you will see my covenant with you because see, this brought you into covenant with the Lord. When you left the things of the world and got into, into relationship with God, it brought you into covenant with him. Right. So the Lord is saying that you're getting ready to see his covenant with you in action. In other words, it's just like um, when a man and wife, a uh, man and, and woman get married, um, you know, the man is, is, is supposed to be the provider, right? He's supposed to be the head of the household. And as soon as he gets married, that, that obligation, that duty goes right into action. Well, you've put yourself into covenant with the Lord. You are married to the Lord and he's your provider. So he's getting ready to provide for you. He's getting ready to take care of you. He's getting ready to show you um, what it looks like to be married to him, what it looks like to be in covenant with him. Um, he says, um, for I have marked your life with my abundance. He's getting ready to show you. You've been marked by the Lord. Okay. You are marked by the Lord. It's just like uh, um, when you get married the woman changes her last name to be what the man's the the man's last name is, right? So you have lost your your old last name, and now you have the last name of Jesus Christ. So it's like you you receive now that you are married to Him. It's just like what's mine is yours, what's yours what's yours is mine. Yeah, you guys are now getting ready to receive the abundant life that God promises all of His children because you've done the work. He says, "I have placed my hedge around you." In other words, remember, like I told you, I think I think I said it in the last video, Job had his hedge of protection removed. That means each one of us has a hedge of protection. Those of us who are who belong to God, we all have a, a hedge of protection. But sometimes the Lord allows that hedge of protection to be removed so that the, 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 the enemy can buffet us. But the Lord uses the buffeting of the enemy to form us in our character, to build us up, to prepare us for what his plan is. For our life. So what the enemy meant for evil, God turns it around for our good. And then after all of the buffeting is done, the Lord returns the hedge. So your hedge has been returned. You are protected. The Lord has returned the hedge around you. And he's saying that I will give you surety. So uh, for this is your seasons beginning to be useful on your mountain. The Lord is saying he's becoming your guarantee. He's becoming, in other words, your co-signer. Um, that's a big claim. He's becoming your co-signer. He's becoming your guarantee. He's becoming surety for you. You don't have to worry about a thing from this point on. Like you have entered into your new season, this new season where God is getting ready to use you mightily, okay? And he's saying that you're not gonna have to worry about anything because he's gonna use you so mightily that like you're gonna have all the provision, all of the resources, everything that you're supposed to have in this season, all right? Um, So you're going to be under the security of the Lord. All right. I, I want to say it that way. You're going to be under the security, good security of the Lord. All right. I don't know why I get these eyelashes, guys. They, they always want to. There, I got it. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to read two verses before I get into John chapter 11. Um, I'm going to read Genesis chapter 47, verse 29. And it says this, it says, And the time drew nigh that Israel must die. And he called his son Joseph and said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt. So guys, this verse right here is saying, um, the Lord is saying the time has come. Your time has come um, that your old life is supposed to be finished with. Like, and everything that you've gone through is now done with. You, you, you've died to self. You have, you have been 
you, you've, you've, you, it's finished. It's just finished. He's saying he's calling you forth as a Joseph. He's calling you forth um, with increase. That's what the name Joseph literally means, increase or to uh, add to, addition, yeah? Um, so the Lord is also saying here that you found grace in his sight. And so he's getting ready to lift you up. He's getting ready to lift you up and he's gonna bring you up out of that time of bondage, that time of, of feeling bound, like you can't move forward, like you're feeling stuck. That's what I mean by bondage. I don't mean that you're living in a life of sin. I mean that the time of being stuck, the time of not moving, the time of not being able to step into purpose. He's lifting you up and bringing you out of that at this point. And so um, this is what the Lord is saying. He says, and the time was at hand to be joined to the offered present produced and made ready to take that the chosen to rule with God must need and very suddenly. So again, Guys, the time the Lord is saying our time has come. Those of us who have been waiting on the Lord um, to to fulfill his promises to us, to fulfill the need um, that we have right now um, to be able to go forth um, into the, the thing that he has offered us to do. Because the thing is this, all of you who are at this point. Sorry, I'm playing. All of you who are at this point have made it to your purpose. You have made it. You already know what it is. The Lord has shown you what it is. You know what you're supposed to do. And the Lord is uh, saying that you've made it to the point. It's already been prepared for you. It's already been offered to you. It's already been produced. It's ready for you to take hold of so that you can begin ruling. Okay? So, um, why? Because you went through the suffering. Those who suffer with Christ will reign with Christ. You are getting ready to reign with the Lord. And so, um, the Lord is saying that he's getting ready to give you what you need so that you can be able to reign and it's about to happen very suddenly. And so he called forth um, to be famous, his anointed and appointed chosen, chosen children to encounter the chance to become, uh, excuse me, to encounter the chance to come upon increase and they spoke unto him. So, um, so you're being called forth in this hour, this, this time, this, from this season, this summer season, June, July, August, right? You're, you're being called forward. You're being called forward during this time. Uh, and you are about to be made famous. You're about to be made well-known. You're about, your name is about to be heard in places that you didn't think it would ever be heard in. Um, many people are going to be coming to you. The Lord is getting ready to release an influx of people to your ministry, to your calling, to your vocation, whatever it is that the Lord has called you to do. Um, why? Because he has anointed and appointed you as one of his children. Um, and now the chance, the opportunity that you've been waiting for is about to occur. The chance for increase to come upon you, okay? So for some of you, are, are some of you, I can say that you're about to receive a windfall. Some of you are about to receive an inheritance. Some of you are about to receive a promotion on the job. Some of you are about to receive um, destiny helpers that are going to pour into you, that are going to sow into you. So there's going to be a lot of different ways that the Lord is going to make this happen, but there's going to be increase that's going to be happening to you this summer. Okay. Um, and he says, and so they spoke unto him talking about you and I, and this is what we said to the Lord. He says, if now I have the occasion to get hold upon and be hit with the present that is ready to speedily take hold on a favor in your pleased presence, a point uh, so this is us saying, Lord, if indeed the occasion has finally come, the, the, the time has finally come for us to be able to uh, uh, take possession of, our, of the promise that you promised us so that we could be able to uh, walk in our purpose because we have found favor in your sight and we are, our countenances, the changed people that we have become pleases you. This is what, we, that's what the Lord is saying that we are now saying to him, appoint the call of a name change to dispose of the giving up that holds down leaving, to make a mark on the name and ordain the ordered place preserved for purpose to put on a reward that causes one to be set up to show and tell that the, the downtrodden overturned being downtrodden by a complete work. So in other words, the Lord is saying here, they were asking, Lord, if indeed we do have, we found favor in your sight, if indeed we have gone through this um, point, this is what many of our prayers have been lately. Um, Lord, then I'm asking you to change my name. In other words, change my identity so much so, Lord God, that um, it removes me wanting to give up because a lot of people have gotten to the point now where they've been so tired that, they're, that they want to give up. 
okay? And so, oh, hold on guys, I'm sorry. It happens like that sometimes. All right, so. Um, now I lost my place. Help me out here, Holy Spirit. Um, where was I at? Okay, here I am. Sorry, guys, about that. So the Lord is saying that you, 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 the prayer that we've been praying lately is that uh, we want the, the name change. We want the identity changed, the identity of being downtrodden. Like if we've, we've gone through the process. We've, we've gone through everything that we were supposed to go through, right? We did everything that we were supposed to do, but the outward situation, the outward circumstances have not changed yet, right? So inwardly we've changed, spiritually we've changed, mentally we've changed, but the circumstance has not changed. And so this, this has been our prayer. Like indeed, Lord, if we have found favor in your sight, if we have done what you've told us to do, then give us this, this um, um, uh, take away the, the, the identity that makes us wanna give up. Because the, the fact of the matter is we've been holding on for so long um, that many of us have grown weary in well-doing, right? Um, many of us have grown so weary that we say, okay, man, I just, I, I can't believe that I'm still going through this after, you know, so many years, after so many months, you know? Some of you, it's been a decade. Some of you, it's been 12 years. Some of you, it's been 16 years. For me, it's been four, you know? Um, some of, some other people, it's been for four years, you know? But however long it's been, you know, sometimes, you know, and that's the other thing too, don't ever compare yourself to someone else's wilderness season, someone else's journey, because each journey is different. And so some may have shorter times, some may have longer times, but it's all because of the character building. It's all because of the purpose. You're, sometimes your, your, your purpose is so much greater that it takes longer in the wilderness because there's a lot of things that have to get out of you so that the Lord can put them, uh, the things in you that he needs to be in you, right? So, um, but he says, um, appoint the name, uh, appoint the call of a name change to dispose of the giving up that holds down leaving to make a mark on the name and ordain the ordered place preserved, preferred, uh, preserved for purpose to put on a reward that causes one to be set up to show and tell how the downtrodden overturn being downtrodden by a complete work. So the Lord is saying, um, the, the prayer that we've been praying is, Lord, again, change our name, change our identity, change the outward appearance to reflect the inside, right? Um, um, so that we could be able to go and start our journeys. So that's what that's talking about. So that we can be able to go and start um, the, the purpose that the Lord has ordained for our lives. We have been marked, the, 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 the purpose that God has marked us to do, okay? And so... Um, and and it's going to be ordained that the the purpose that we have been marked to do the lord has already ordained a specific place for us to do it which we already know the place like most if you're watching this and you you already know the place that god has called you to you already know the thing that god has called you to you already know how you're going to do it it's just a matter of having what you need to be able to do it and so um this abundant life that god is bringing this increase that god is bringing he's it's going to cause you to be able to 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 depart on your journey to leave right to go on your journey it's going to set you up to be able to be you know how you uh when when back in elementary school you had show and tell you would bring something from home that you wanted to show the class right so you're getting ready to show and tell what you have learned through your process um you're getting ready to show how you learn through your specific process of being able to overturn being downtrodden okay so whatever your situation went uh was that you had to go through to change, 
change your circumstances of being uh, from, you know, of going from being overlooked to being now overbooked, you know, you're going to show people this is what you went through to be able to get to this point in your life where you are now, where the Lord is blessing you to be at now. Okay. And he's saying, um, and, and you're going to tell them that it took, you know, you have to do the work. You have to go through it in order to get to it, you know? And so, um, then it goes on and says, says, I pray you with your hand of power under my body, deck and dress me to execute the feast as a warrior finished and fit to go govern a great feast by indeed being industrious on the journey, laboring to maintain the met, observed and occupied offer come to pass to perform and provide by the sacrifice of serving as a warrior workman yielded for use with loving kindness, mercy and pity for the wicked to reprove with truth, truth to build up and support. I'm going to stop there. Um, so now the petition that we've been praying is like, okay, Lord, I'm ready to do this. Like, um, put me in position, like put me, it's just like when you get a new job and they give you the uniform, um, because you can't work your job without the uniform. This is what tells you what your new identity is. So you're telling the Lord, give me my new identity, Lord, you know, put me in that in, in, in into my new identity so that I can go and be the warrior that you've called me to do that I can govern a great feast. Remember, you know, man don't work, a man don't eat. So that feast, the provision that you need, right? The, the provision that you need for work, the provision you need for purpose, the provision you need to govern um, and to rule with authority um, so that you can be industrious. The Lord, like you, you are being, on, this purpose is gonna make you very industrious, right? And so um, laboring to maintain the met, observed and occupied offer. So the offer, it, it, you, the petition that you're making is saying, God, you know, give me what I need so I can be able to fulfill your purpose for my life. All right. Um, and provide by the sacrifice of serving as a warrior workman. You are ready to serve. You want to serve. You're ready to go out and start serving, but you just haven't had the means to do it. So yielded for use with loving kindness and you're going to work in the spirit of loving kindness and the spirit of mercy and you're going to have pity on those who who lived as you once did in that wickedness you know in the in the sins of the world um and you're going to show them you're going to reprove them with loving kindness mercy and pity and you're going to help them um by showing them the truth to build them up and to support them. You're going to be a, a good support system for them. You're going to help build up people. Um, you're going to foster people as parents. Um, you know, and when I mean by that, you know, not necessarily, some of you may become foster parents. Maybe that's, uh, for some of you, it may be that the Lord has called you to be foster parents. And that I was watching a video earlier today about a man named Peter on YouTube. Maybe many of you know him, but he adopted um, some white children. He's a black man from Uganda. But he adopted three black children, and one of them, um, the first child that he ever adopted, um, is now an adult. He's, well, he turned 18. But they, they have such a great relationship that the son was talking about how he knew him from the very first day. He asked him if he could call him dad, and he was like, no, call me Mr. Peter. And he was like, okay, dad. You know, he knew that it was his forever father. And so um, many of you are, are going to have people like that in your life that are going to come into your life that they're going to be looking to you for help. They're going to be looking to you to help, uh, be that parent for them that they'd never had. Um, they're going to be looking to you. Uh, um, and I mean that, you know, spiritually, uh, you could be a spiritual father or mother, you know, someone that is that needs the guidance, someone that needs the instruction, someone that needs to hear the truth so that they can be set free like you were set free. And so um, it says to foster as a parent being firm and faithful. So in other words, you're not going to sugarcoat things, you know, but you're not going to be, um, you know, nasty to them. You're not going to be mean to them. Um, you're going to. Um, you're going to be at that point where you can, you know, really help them. Um, and, 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 and show them how to become faithful, you know, to God, how to, how to trust the Lord. And it says, and believe to be morally true. In other words, you're going to teach people how to walk away from immorality like you walked away from immorality. Okay. Um, and certain to go to the right hand with an assurance to believe. The right hand is the right hand of God's favor, right? The right hand of God's re, uh, receiving of, uh, uh, um, you know, God's blessing, right? And so... Um, you're going to show them how to access God, you know, with an assurance to believe, established to be faithful, trusted and verified of the father, just like you were, 
we have all been, all of us who are ready now to step into purpose, we have been faithful to the Lord. Um, we trust the Lord and now the Lord trusts us. And we have been verified by God. So now this is why we're able to be sent out now. This is why the Lord is getting ready to send us out because he can trust us. All right. We have been verified by the father to put their trust to the right with me. So um, in other words, you are you are winning souls for Christ so they can join the army that you're in now. OK. So it says, don't bury me. Don't bury me in any wise. I pray you in the besieged places of distress confined of, uh, by the adversary. So in other words, you, the, the prayer has been, Lord, don't let me stay bound. Don't let me stay bound with distress, but release me so that I can go into purpose. All right. And that's what the Lord is saying here. And he says, so the Lord says, and hedges for the sheepfold, a house of fish. So, and that house of fish is a place in the palace to become abundant and pleasantness, beauty and delight and a branded mark. The father's love finishes the work to settle everyone to awaken, lifted up by the master with their courts of the palace. So guys, you're getting ready to receive your own court in the palace, your own court. You know, you come into the king's court. You ever heard of that, right? You're getting ready to receive your own court. All right. Um, and, and what, who, who operates in the court? So the court has servants. The court has people that work, that, that serve them, you know? So you're getting ready to have people that are going to be ready to, 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 to help you execute your purpose. You're going to have people who are destiny helpers, people who are called to you, people who the Lord has said, go to this person to help them. Remember how Paul uh, had the scales on his eyes and he saw in the vision um, that um, he was going to, uh, that there was going to be someone who's going to come and, and, and remove the scales from his eyes. And then the Lord talked to, I think it was Ananias and said, there's a man waiting that I've told that is going to be coming to you, uh, him and that you were going to touch him and lay hands on him and he would recover his sight. Um, there are going to be people like that who God's going to touch to come and help your ministry, to come and help you flourish in your purpose. Um, and so the Lord is saying that he's going to, he's, he's hastening his word. And that was the last word I said, uh, that I talked about when I talked about a house. If you didn't see that video, look at that video. Um, when the Lord says, um, he asked Jeremiah, what did you see? He said, I see an almond tree. He said, you've seen well, because I will hasten my word to perform it. The Lord is finishing up his work in you. Okay. This summer is the finished work of the Lord coming to fulfillment and completion. Um, in the natural, like in the spirit has already been done, but now it's coming to completion in the natural. Um, so he can settle you. Um, and he's settling everyone to awaken to who they are in God, to awaken to their true purpose in God, to awaken to their true life in God, lifted up by the master with their courts of the palace. So the Lord is getting ready to give you beauty, pleasantness, delight. You're going to be branded with his mark and it's him showing you his love. He's getting ready to make everything complete. All right. Um, and so after, after the manner of, and by any means beyond measure are so many things brought to pass to be fulfilled, having been made to be married and ordained to partake of being shown with Jesus as married and ordained, pledged as a bondsman in a place and time of rest quickly and shortly with a nobler, stronger covenant as a testator with great dominion, might, power, and strength. Guys, the Lord is saying that. Um, this thing is getting ready to happen to you by any means necessary. Like you're getting ready to come through this, like in ways that you didn't see it happening, like in ways that you didn't foresee it happening. You're getting ready to see God bring things to, to pass. You're getting ready to see God fulfill his promise. You're getting ready to see God. Why? Because you are married and ordained to the Lord. So since you are married and ordained to the Lord, it's only fair that you partake of the things of the Lord. Because why? It's just like a man and wife. Remember a husband and wife, I told you again. Once the husband marries the wife, then now the wife has you know everything. The husband becomes the provider. So whatever he makes, whatever he does, whatever, the wife partakes of it, right? And so the body of Christ, we are his bride, right? So we are a part of that. And so the Lord is saying that you have pledged yourself to be a bondsman, to be, in other words, to be a servant of the most high God, that um, as a testator, someone who testifies of God, um, and you're going to have great dominion in it. You're going to have might. You're going to have power. You're going to have strength. And the Lord is saying that um, he, this, this time and place that you are now in is, is entering into the place of rest. And he's quick, uh, quickly and shortly, he's bringing this to pass. All right. So I talked to you guys um, 
about uh, John 11. I, I'm, I want to tell you guys a short little story is that um, for the past three days, I've been, I, I work in, in the city. I don't live in Manhattan, I, but I work in Manhattan. And so um, <laughs> I've been, <clears throat> for the past three days, on the, I, I, I've been just, like when I say stared at, I mean stared at like this. By Asian people. And I have not understood why for the past three days. I, I don't, I mean, I don't ordinarily get stared at, but these Asian people that have been staring at me have been staring at me so intensely for the past three days. And I'm like, God, this has to mean something. I don't know what it means, but it makes me uncomfortable, but I don't know what it means. And so um, last night I, I went out to um, dinner with some friends and we were sitting in the city outside close to Times Square. And um, there was this Asian man that just walked by and he just stopped and stared at me. Out of the blue, it was so random, so random. He just stopped and stared at me. And so he walks up to me and, um, well, after about 15 minutes, he had disappeared. He walked away because I was like clearly uncomfortable. Like, why is he staring at me? So he walks away. And about 15 minutes later, he just kind of like reappeared out of the blue. It was strange. It was so strange. And um, so he looked and I said, hello. And it kind of broke the ice. I, he wanted to approach me the entire time, I guess. But since I hadn't spoken, he didn't know what to say or do. So when I said hello, he walked towards me and he didn't speak a lick of English. <laughs> so um, I speak Japanese. I don't speak Korean. And that's where he was from. He was from Korea. So the extent of my Korean, uh, Korean is really just Anyang Haseo. That's it, which means hello. So when I said that, he smiled and I kind of looked at and he bowed and, and said it back to me. And because he pointed to himself, he goes, Korea, 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 Korea. And I was like, oh, you're from South Korea. Oh, okay. And he smiled, you know, like, yes. And so I asked him, New York, good? You know, I, I kind of signaled my thumb like, you know, New York, good? And he's like, oh, 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 good, 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 good. You know, he really enjoyed himself. And so like, you know, he was smoking a cigarette. I'm allergic to tobacco, but he was smoking a cigarette. Um, thank God it was outside because the smoke kind of went the other way and he was drinking a beer. So I was just like, okay, Lord, this means something. I don't know what it means, but okay. So I sat there, you know, we had like this short conversation and we, you know, I continued finishing my meal. When I finished, um, I said, okay, you know, bye-bye. And he's like, oh, bye-bye, bye-bye, you know? But he was so happy, but it was so strange because then when I got on the train to come home, um, there was another Asian family that was sitting adjacent from me and they were just like, and then the grandfather or father, I don't know who it was, it was an older uh, man. He said he had a, a little son with, uh, a little boy with, was with them. And the little boy wasn't behaving well. So the father said something to him that was apparently reflected towards me because the little boy turned around in slow motion like this and just looked at me afraid. And I said, what, what's, what, what's the, you know, what's going on at this point? I'm really frustrated. And then when I got home, I said, Lord, why do you have these people just staring at me? Why are these people just looking at me now? Next month, I'm actually going to Japan, but I don't have Japanese people looking at me like that when I'm in Japan. So. I didn't understand what that meant. So when I came home, I asked the Lord, what is it, you know, what, what, what did it mean? And so um, when I, when the man said Korea, he pointed to himself and said Korea, I decided to look up that word. And so Korea means high and noble place. <laughs> in a, it, it also means, excuse me, high and noble castle or place is what it means. So guys, it's a palace and the Lord is like putting it in my face showing me that the palace is, is, is drawn near. So also in the time, in, in the place of, um, when you think of Asia, the, the name for Asia literally means to arise. It derives from two words that form two characters for the word Asia. And it means to arise from the place where the sun rises, right? To arise. So 
the Lord has been showing me for the past three days that he's drawn near. <laughs> when I tell you that these people have been literally like this in my face, almost, I mean, I mean, I'm being exaggerating, but they're like this. Like, it's not like, you know, they're really close up on me and it's very uncomfortable. So I didn't understand it because I don't, <laughs> like I said, that, that does not happen to me. So um, the Lord is saying, yeah, that the time has come, like the, the, the time to, to, to move to the castle, the time to move to the palace, the time to ascend, the time to arise, the time to come forth has come. You, the time to draw near, has, uh, the, the time for you to walk into purpose has drawn near. All right. And so I, I, I wanted to say that because I want to read John 11. I'm trying to make this video less than less than an hour. I'm already at 40 minutes here. Sorry for that interruption. It was a FedEx man that came earlier. So for my my friend who lives downstairs. All right. So I'm going to read um, John chapter 11 verses 1 to 46 because I want you guys to hear how this goes all right so it says now a certain man was sick named lazarus of bethany the town of mary and her sister martha all right it was that Mar uh it was that mary which anointed the lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother lazarus was sick therefore his sister sent unto him saying lord behold he whom thou lovest is sick when jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God, that the son of man, a son of God might be glorified thereby. Guys, this awakening that you are about to experience from the Lord is for God to get the glory. All right. So you've been you've been heart sick. You've been uh, uh, you know, there's been a, a, a spiritual sickness that you've been dealing with that you you know, that you've been going through that. You know, God, I'm getting weary. I'm getting you know tired. The Lord is saying that the glory that is about to be revealed to you it reminds me of Romans 8 and 18. You know, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that is revealed in us. Right. So the Lord is the reason why you had to go uh, um, through what you went through is so that God could get the glory. So it says now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of, the, of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? Is any man walk in the day? Uh, if any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of, of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. So guys, this is the Lord is saying here, when you walk in your night season, you stumble, right? When you're walking in that wilderness season, you're stumbling. You're trying to make your way through because the light hasn't been ignited in you. The fire of God hasn't been ignited in you yet, right? So now um, the Lord is saying that the fire has been ignited in you. Now it's time for you to awaken, okay? So it says, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep, all right? So many of you have been dormant. Many of you have been... Uh, yeah, just in a, in a place of waiting, you've been stuck. But now the Lord is saying that he's coming. To, he's, he's come, not coming. He has come to awaken you out of slumber. You are being awakened to your purpose. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. All right. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. So what God is getting ready to do in your life, many people who have been watching you, who, who have not believed in your journey, who have not believed in your purpose, they are about to see the glory of the Lord come upon you so that they will believe, okay? Um, then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, that's so deep, <laughs> Let me read that again. I don't want to skip over that. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. The glory that is about to reveal, uh, that is about to be revealed in you, it's going to cause those who see it, who didn't believe before, that are going to now believe, it's going to cause them to want to go through the same process that you went to, to get to where you are now. So they're going to want to die to self. They're, because of you, they're going to want to die to self. Um, and, and live for Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it says, and then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. 
for some of you people, I, I don't know, I, I felt this last night too when I was reading this. For some of you, this thing is getting ready to happen so quickly, you can expect it within the next four days. Because it's, it's, it's the, I just, I felt that so strongly last night in the next four days. I don't know who that's for. You'll know who it's for. And there's even a person, Kia. Um, but that's just, I don't know. Somebody needs to be getting ready. That's all I got to say. All right. Um, that's not for everybody. So don't take it that I said four days for everybody. I'm just saying that for, for, for someone specific, the next four days, you need to be getting ready. And as I was dealing with the Asia thing, the Lord had also showed me the name Kia and what it meant. Um, because Kia literally means in the in in an African dialect, it means a hill or a mountain. In um, and it also means like a season's beginning. And it's so ironic that the Lord showed me that name last night, Kia, when today is the first day of summer. So a season's beginning. The season's beginning of your hill and mountain. When you use it in the, in the Swedish name, the name Kia in Swedish literally means to be useful. So you're getting ready to be useful, whoever it is, this is, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be for Kia specifically, but that name came up last night. So as I was meditating on this word. Um, now, verse 18. So it says, now Bethany was nigh unto Beth, uh, Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. Guys, get yourself prepared to have this encounter with the Lord. All right. But Mary sat still in the house. And so what's funny is, that after it says, then Martha, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, there's a colon after it. So whenever you have a colon after something, it represents whatever came after that, after that, whatever comes after that colon is the reason why the first part was said. So, but Mary sat still in the house. So the, you need to still yourself before the Lord. You need to get yourself prepared before the Lord. Um, that's what that literally means. When you um, look up the word, um, uh, to be still and know that I am God. When you look that up, it means to be made whole. It means to be um, be repaired. So r get yourself in the right mindset to be uh, mindset to be made whole and prepare yourself to encounter the Lord. Um, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Okay, that's. Faith. It's because of faith. Even if, even if he died, she still knows that God is able to raise him up. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Your time of rising has come, guys. It's time for you to rise again. All right. You were at a point, even before you went through this transformation, you were at a point in life where things were finally comfortable for you, where you were at a, point, a, a, a good point in your career, in your life. Everything was great. But since going through this process, it seems like, oh my goodness, will I ever get back to that height stature again, you know, in life? God is saying, yes, your time has come. Martha said unto him, I know that he, will ri he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Um, she said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. <laughs> Woo, Shama. Woo, Shama. The Master is calling, guys. The Master is calling. The Master is come and he's calling you forward. The master is come and he's calling you forward. Please hear me. The master is, call, is come and is calling you forward. Your time is come. It's no longer a far off. This season of summer is your time to come forward. All right. Um, as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Move quickly. When you see God moving, when you see that thing, this thing is getting ready to happen in your life, you need to move quickly. Don't delay. All right? Don't delay. 
Um, it says, now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, uh, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her saying, she goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping with, uh, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, where have ye laid him? Okay. Um, they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Don't you understand that everything that you've gone through, the Lord has cried over you. Everything that you have dealt with in this journey, the Lord has seen it. Everything that the enemy did to you, the, how, the, how the enemy hurt you through the circumstances that the Lord has seen it. He has seen it and it hurt him too. This is why you're getting ready to be restored. This is why you're going to be uh, getting ready to be resurrected. This is why you're getting ready to have abundant life. It's because this is the Lord's way of comforting you, of saying that I'm here and I'm sorry that you had to go through that. You are getting ready to be comforted by the Lord. You're getting ready to receive power from the Lord uh, 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 to an extent. And I, what I mean by power, I'm not talking about the spiritual power. I'm talking about authority in Christ. Okay. So he says, um, then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. Jesus loves us so much. He loves us so, so very much. And he says, and some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Verse 38, Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. Now, here's the thing I, I love because groaning in himself, that groaning is like the spirit of complaining grieves the Holy Spirit, guys. The spirit of complaining, it, it, it really does grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't complain in this season. God is getting ready to do what he said he's going to do. Don't complain. All right. Um, he says, it was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Some people think that your time has come and gone. But I'm prophesying to you now that they are about to see your resurrection come forth. They are about to see your, your stone rolled away. They are about to see you come forth as pure gold. They are about to see you. They are about to see the glory of God upon your life. You are about to come forth. You are about to come forth. People think that you that you, you've become very repugnant. Uh, 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 you, you, you stink in the nostril of other people around you because they think that you are a has been. They think that you are washed up. They think that you thought you heard the Lord and now the Lord has left you abandoned in a corner somewhere and you're just wallowing in your, in your shame and, and humiliation. You have been humiliated to the point where people don't think much of you at all. All right. Um, and, and four, it says you have, he has been dead for four days. When you look at creation, it was on the fourth day that God began to create the material world. So it represents manifestation. It represents manifestation. Four days represent, four represents manifestation. And even in the Hebrew um, Aleph Bet, the fourth letter is the letter Dalet. It represents a door. It represents a door that brings you from one way of life to go through the door and enter into a new way of life, a new path. So some of you are getting ready to have that door moment where you're getting ready to walk into a new path. All right. <clears throat> and so Jesus said unto her, he said, I, I not said, I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe that thou shouldest see the glory of God, God, the Lord is saying that because of your faith, because of your belief, you are getting ready to see his glory. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laying. Mm. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. They are getting ready to see that the Lord has definitely called you and that he is now sending you out. 
the people who have counted you out, the people who have laughed you to scorn, the people who have mocked you, the people who have, uh, uh, you know, belittled you, the people who have humiliated you, they are about to see the, the hand of the Lord bring you forth as pure gold with the glory of the Lord on you. And, and, they, and they're about to see the Lord send you out upon your journey. And it's going to cause them to, he's, the Lord says that because of the people which stand by, I say it. So he's doing it so to show the people who doubt it. And when he had thus spoken, excuse me, and when he had, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he, now, now, he, notice he didn't say, you know, my brother or man. He called him by his name. Your identity is coming forth in this summer, guys. I'm telling you, your your true identity in God, the identity that is and that shows who you who God has created you to be, is coming forth this summer. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. You are about to be loosed. You are about to be sent out. You are about to now. You, the bondage that you are going to be in now is not the bondage of death. It's not the bondage of sin. It's not the bondage of this world. The bondage that you are in now is being a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, of being a servant of the Lord, of working for the Lord, of being a warrior for God. And so um, the Lord is about to loose you from everything, that, what, you, what your past life has been for you. He says, then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him verse the last verse uh 46 but some of them went their ways to the pharisees and told them what things jesus had done guys not everybody's going to be happy for you in this season all right there's still going to be gossipers there's still going to be slanderers but the one thing that they're not going to be able to deny is that god did it <laughs> they're going to be haters they can't deny God did it. They're going to be slanderers. They can't deny God did it. They're going to be enemies. They won't be able to deny God did it. They're going to be people who are going to try and come against you, but they won't have any authority because they're going to see that God did it. They're going to be people who are going to go back and, and spread things about you, who are going to tell about your situation um, to the other people that they were talking about. They're going to be people who are going to see God did it in you. And they're going to go back and tell all those people that were huddled in the corner talking about you saying, yeah, child, we was talking about him. But guess what? He doing this now. He blah, blah, blah. I'm telling you, get ready. Not everybody's going to be happy for you, but you don't have to concentrate on them because God is your protector. God is your hedge. God is with you. And you're going to cause many people, even some of those haters, to believe on Jesus Christ. So even though they're haters, the seed will have been planted when they see the glory of God revealed in you. It is going to plant a seed in them that is going to put them on their corrective course to come out of darkness and into the marvelous light. Amen. So, guys, that is the word um, for today. Um, you're getting ready to receive this awakening um, from the Lord. It's your John 11, 11 moment. All right. So I want you guys to to understand that. Get ready this summer. Today, your season begins. All right. This is not something that, oh, would it happen in the winter or would it happen in the fall? No, you're getting ready to have one of the best summers of your life. All right. So be encouraged by that. I pray that this word blessed you. I really do. I'm sorry that it was lengthy. Sorry that I had the interruption. But I, I pray that the word really blessed you guys and that you um, will take this word to the Lord in prayer to, uh, so that the Lord can um, confirm this word for your life. And uh, yeah, all of my information is, is on my uh, on the home page of this channel. Um, you, there you can find my email. You can find if you felt led by the Lord to sow into this word, you can do so. All of the information is on that, uh, that home page of this channel. All right, guys. Um, oh, if you haven't already, please do me a favor, like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can get notifications of when I'm uploading a video or going live. Hit the notification bell. I'm always on here live on Mondays at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time doing intercessory prayer. So if you have prayer requests, feel free to come in on those time, at that time and leave your prayer requests in the comment. I'm always praying for people. Um, I, I, I thank you again. 
uh, for every email that I've received. Um, I, I, I'm still answering emails. Um, for those of his sown seeds, I've prayed over your seeds. I've blessed those seeds and multiplied them back to you a thousandfold in Jesus name. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've left out. Um, thank you to all of those. Check out the memberships on the channel if you're interested. Um, the memberships are going really well. And yeah, guys, to God be the glory. I'm just grateful for what God is doing. And yeah, until the next time, take care and be blessed.